Hello everyone, welcome back to the question paper discussion of Pediatric Dentistry. We are into the 8th part of the sessions. So this session deals about the pediatric enterotics, the most common essay question of any pediatric question paper. So the common questions we know, pulpotomy, pulpectomy, apexification, apexogenesis. So the first long essay is about pulpotomy. The definition, classification, indication, contraindication and the various medicaments its advantages and disadvantages the difference between formocrisola and glutaraldehyde pulpotomy and describing in detail about formocrisol pulpotomy so finn defined pulpotomy as a complete removal of coronal portion okay it is just removing the coronal portion of the dental pulp so we know dental pulp has coronal portion and the radicular portion. Radicular portion is nothing but the portion of the pulp which is present within the root. And coronal portion is the one which is present within the crown. We cannot say that it is present. It is a continuous structure but we can technically speak coronal pulp and radicular pulp based on the CEJ. So pulpotomy is a removal of coronal portion of the dental pulp after that placement of a suitable dressing or medicament that will promote healing and preserve the vitality of the tooth. Okay, so we have basically two types of pulpotomy, vital and non-vital. In vital we have devitalization type, preservation type, regeneration type and mortal pulpotomy. In devitalization uh, we can have a single sitting and two stage. Single sitting, we can use formocrisol or laser. Two stage, we can use paraform, devitalizing paste. Preservation, uh, zinc oxide, which you know, it has got uh, preservative or preserving uh, the biological tissues uh, properties. So that properties uh, will be used for preserving the structures. So the materials used as zinc oxide, which you know, had and ferric sulfide. Regeneration, it is uh, different. It has the capability that is calcium hydroxide. It has capability of regenerating like dentine. So it is regeneration pulpotomy. So MTA can be used. Osteogenic protein can be used. Mortal pulpotomy, we can use beechwood crisol or formocrisol and non vital pulpotomy. So what are the indications of pulpotomy? One is mechanical pulp exposure teeth showing a large caries lesion but free of radicular pulpitis basically the infection which is technically within the crown or the coronal pulp and next indication history of only spontaneous pain okay hemorrhage from exposure sites bright red and it can be controlled that means it's a limited hemorrhage then there's no absence of uh, I mean uh, absence of abscess or fistula it means there is no periapical or radicular infection there is no bone loss there is no inter radicular radiolucency and at least two-thirds of root length still present to ensure reasonable functional life and young permanent tooth with vital exposed pulp and incomplete formed apices okay so these are the indications of pulpotomy where we try to retain the vitality of tooth and helps the tooth to uh, rebuild the structures that is it can rebuild the apex or it can form the closure of uh, apical foramen so we need to retain the radicular pulp in order to produce the structures at the apex but contraindication if we have a persistent toothache that means the infection has spread in radicular pulp then tenderness or percussion where the infection is uh, likely to uh, present on the periapex. Then the root is absorption where uh, involving one third of the root length, large caries lesion with non-restorable crown, highly viscous sluggish hemorrhage, not like bright red and which is non-controllable uh, medical contraindications like heart disease or immunocompromised patient, presence of fistula. Uh, presence of resorption it can be external or internal 
and mobility and calcification of pulp. In all these cases, pulpotomy is contraindicated. So, what are the advantages of glutaraldehyde? So, we can use many materials. So, what are the advantages of glutaraldehyde over formocrisol? So, glutaraldehyde is a bifunctional reagent which aim, which allows to form strong intra and intermolecular protein bonding, which leads to superior fixation by cross-linkage. It's an excellent antimicrobial agent and it has got superior fixative properties uh, self-limiting penetration it causes less necrosis it causes less dystrophic calcification of pulp canal less toxic and it demonstrates less systemic distribution it is slow tissue binding readily metabolized eliminated in urine uh, that is 90 percentage in three days and the mutagenicity and antigenicity is less compared to the formocrisol. Okay, so these are the advantages of glutaraldehyde. Next thing is what is the composition of formocrisol? It is also known as Buckley's formula. The cresol is 35 percentage, glycerol 15, formaldehyde 19, and water 31 percentage. Its preparation we use one fifth concentration of Buckley's formula, which is prepared by the following method that is dilute three parts of glycerin and one part of water that is 90 ml and 30 ml this is three part and this is one part so add one part of formocrisol to four parts that you're creating three parts of glycerin one part of uh, diluted sterile water then one part of formocrisol to four four part diluent so this 30 ml formocrisol will be added to 120 ml of diluent to obtain 150 ml of formocrisol. So what are the histological changes happening? So immediately the pulp becomes fibrous and acidophilic and after 7 to 14 days there will be three zones. The first one is zone of fixation, then a zone of atrophy which has poor cellular definition then zone of inflammation which extending apically into the normal pulp tissue after one year there will be progressive apical movement of these zones only with acidophilic zone left at the end of one year okay so these are the histological changes happening next question enumerate various pulp therapy procedures for primary teeth indications of pulp therapy in children discuss in detail about pulpectomy okay so sometimes they'll simply ask any tooth don't get confused the procedure is almost same for all the teeth so what are the various pulp therapy procedures that is direct pulp capping indirect pulp capping pulpotomy apexogenesis pulpectomy and apexification this is this four techniques where we can retain the world vitality vitality and we can uh, have a possibility of uh, rebuilding the structures it means the formation of remaining part of the root or creation of a dentine uh, or other vital structures where pulpectomy and apexification where it's mostly done on non-vital teeth so what are the indications of indirect pulp capping when there is deep carry solution which are close to but not involving the pulp in vital primary or young permanent teeth okay so when pulp inflammation is seen as nominal and there is definite layer of affected dentine after removal of infected dentine. Whereas direct pulp capping when we have a small mechanical exposure surrounded by sound dentine in asymptomatic vital primary teeth. Okay, indirect we are doing on a deep carry solution but direct we are doing on a mechanical exposure by uh, using of a rotary instrument. So this exposure should have bright red hemorrhage, not like uh, uh, dark red, which is, which is indicating a deep lesion, which can be easily controlled by a dry cotton or pellet with minimal pressure and through pinpoint exposure, we can do direct pulp capping. So what are the indications of pulpotomy, mechanical pulp exposure in primary teeth? large case lesion but no radicular pulpitis only spontaneous pain hemorrhage from exposure site bright red and which can be controlled and absence of abscess or fistula 
when we do apexogenesis indicated in traumatized or palpably involved vital permanent tooth when root apex is incompletely formed there is no history of spontaneous pain no sensitivity on percussion so what are the indications of pulpectomy when we have uncontrolled pulpal hemorrhage primary tooth in absence of its permanent successor primary teeth with necrotic pulp and minimum of root resorption when teeth with stomas teeth in hemophiliacs primary pulpless uh, teeth when speech aesthetics are a factor uh, pulpless uh, molars holding orthodontic appliances all are pulpless teeth okay so indications for apexification is on non vital permanent teeth with open apex which is also known as blunderbuss canal next we have pulpectomy so we have two types of uh, uh, pulpectomy that is single visit and multiple visit in pulpectomy we remove entire pulp so single visit pulpectomy the procedure first is anesthetized and isolated axis cavity is prepared coronal and radicular pulp is removed then using uh, a file we take a file with iopa then filing done to enlarge the canals uh, for condensing the filling material then saline irrigation is done then drying the canal obturate the canal pulpal and coronal portion place the final restorative material it's nothing but root canal treatment on a primary teeth so what we do uh, this single visit will be done on a, a one visit okay whereas multiple visit pulpectomy in first visit what we do is a first procedure first few procedures will be done and the remaining will be done on the second appointment so first we do the anesthetization isolation access cavity then the pulp, then the coronal and radicular pulp is removed after that formocrisol cotton pellet is placed in the chamber and keep a temporary restoration and the second appointment we uh, call the patient after 5 to 7 days and remove that restoration deep by the canal filing irrigating drying and keeping a temporary restoration so what are the pulp capping methods so we have two types of pulp capping methods indirect and direct okay so indirect is defined as a procedure wherein small amount of caries dentin is retained in deep areas of cavity so in order to avoid exposure of pulp followed by placement of a suitable medicament and restorative material which seals off the caries dentin and encourages pulp recovery so we already seen the indications of direct and indirect pulp capping so direct pulp capping when there is a mechanical trauma uh, or the exposure uh, due to any rotary instrument so we just place a medicament or non medicated material on the pulp okay uh, so excavating the last portion of deep dentinal caries and it is usually happens due to the trauma so what are the medicaments we use so the first one is calcium hydroxide it is a white crystalline slightly soluble basic salt which dissociates into calcium and hydroxyl ion and exhibits high alkalinity so it induces that is the most important property induces hard tissue formation so it forms a dentin bridge when placed in contact with pulpal tissue so it is a regenerative material so next we have corticosteroids and antibiotics neomycin hydrocortisone ledamix or penicillin or vancomycin with calcium hydroxide can be used in and material like uh, isobutyl cyanoacrylate and tricalcium phosphate ceramic can be used uh, direct bonding like total h material a polygenic film can be laid over an exposure site without displacing pulp tissue and onto surrounding dentin the adc film is cured by light and act as a barrier as a composite resin is generally spread over the pulp onto the surrounding dentate isobutyl cyanoacrylate used as a capping agent and proved to be an excellent hemostatic agent as well uh, a reparative dentin bridge simulator denatured albumin 
uh, this protein has calcium binding properties if a pulp exposure is capped with protein the protein may become matrix for calcification thereby increasing the chance of biological obliteration then we have mta that is mineral tracts aggregate it is heart tissue formation and pulpal tissue promotes rapid cell growth produces a thicker dentinal bridge less inflammation less hyperemia less pulpal necrosis collagen fibers is there it influences mineralization and less irritant four meta adhesive uh, laser bone morphogenic pro proteins all are there now we need to study about epoxification epoxification it is a method of inducing inducing okay we are inducing apical closure through the formation of a mineralized tissue in the apical pulpal region of a non vital tooth this is the most important part non vital tooth okay so we are creating or inducing apical closure okay of a non vital tooth because the tooth has lost its vitality it cannot create or apical closure by its own because of lack of pulpal tissue so we are inducing it with an incompletely formed root and an open apex so we can use zinc oxide eugenol tricalcium phosphate uh, mta calcium hydroxide or collagen calcium phosphate gel so after uh, root canal preparation this calcium hydroxide powder is used to fill 2 mm short of radiographic apex then remaining canal is filled with calcium hydroxide mixed with saline barium sulfate may be added for radio opacity then calcium hydroxide e ejected into pulp chamber tf is applied after 6 to 24 months apexification is verified if it is done it will be followed by root canal treatment so calcium hydroxide we already uh, seen in detail some examples are pulpad and bical hydrex so what is electrosurgical pulpotomy so it is like same procedure but we are doing uh, electrical method so same like isolation and la administration caries removal uh, so cotton pellets will be kept the uh, high factor plus 7797 7 set at 40% power and 705 ampere electrode used to deliver the electric arc then cotton removed and electrode placed 1 to 2 mm above the pulp electric arc allowed to bridge the gap for one second followed by cool down period of five seconds pulp stem dry and blackened then pulp chamber filled with zinc oxide original final restoration so pulp vitality test we already discussed we already have a separate video i'll put in the i button uh, the various types of pulp vitality test cold test uh, the slow test the temperature test uh, the the test which is done by making a cavity so many techniques are there so all will be uh, you can watch it in a separate video so i'll be putting it in i button so that was about pulp vitality test so that was all about this session so i'll be uh, making two more sessions uh, for this speed odontic question papers so this session was all about the pulpotomy, pulpectomy, apexification and apexogenesis. So first you need to understand the concept. So it will be easy. The procedures are almost same, little bit difference of the material. Pulpotomy is a removal of coronal pulp. Pulpectomy is removal of complete pulp. Apexogenesis is creating apex by its own uh, structures. I mean its own uh, pulp. Apexification, we are doing it on a non vital tooth. So that's all about this session. I'll come up with the next session in pediatrics. Thank you.